Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ozymandia series. And we are right back where we uh, left off in the last episode, where we were trying to land on Priax, which is one of the moons around Erlum. So the Ozymandias is now already in its descent or in her, on her descent. We're retracting everything so we don't crash it into the ground. That would be really bad if we lost some solar panels or radiators due to uh, litho breaking. Those of you who don't know, litho breaking is, well, it's basically crashing. Lithos from the Greek word for stone and breaking, of course, breaking. And so the stone breaks your. Im uh, Velocity, yeah, that's kind of the sense that that means. But we do not want this to happen. So we are controlling our descent via our radial engines. Some wobbling going on because, of course, docking ports, they are very prone to uh, those wobbly thingies. And firing once more, a little bit faster really have to adjust the throttle here because well even though it's low gravity I have to be careful because we're a little bit on an inclination and I don't want to tip this thing around somewhere okay but this is actually looking good just floating a little bit and then we're almost ready to set down and yes, there we go, we have landed an interstellar cruiser, an interplanetary cruiser on a moon. Okay, so time to get the drills out and get the solar panels out and of course get the refinery going and of course get some science because of course we want to get a boatload of science from all of the moons that we are going to visit, which are coincidentally not that many uh, now that we are already, well, at Erlum, because we have Priax now, then there is Polta, Valtal, then we have the two moons of Nidon, which are Nisi and Thatmo. And then it's on to Plock. Yeah, that would be it. Then we have all the bodies we can land on from the Outer Planets mod covered. So that's basically... What did I say? We have Polto, Waltal. So it's basically five moons and a planet that we still have to visit. And once we've done that, we can get home with a boatload of science. So we already visited four moons of Sarnas, or was it five? Hail, Ovok, Elu, Slato, it's five, and Tecto. So we already have half of the moons that we can visit in the Outer Planets mod behind us. But we still have a big look at that. Isn't that beautiful? See the ring system around Erlum? I've been reading up a little bit about uh, Uranus, the real-life pendant, so to speak, to uh, that in-game planet. And uh, those rings were discovered in 1977, even though the famous astronomer William Herschel, after one of, that, one of the famous space telescopes was named, he claimed to have found some rings around uh, Uranus, but his claim was, well, not many believed him because with the equipment of that time, some 200 years ago or something, it was thought to be impossible to see rings around Uranus. But maybe he had really, really good eyes. I don't know. However, they were confirmed in 1977 and have been explored ever since. So Erlum is sort of representative of Uranus in real life, 
and Uranus was a Greek god, basically the first god, and he was a god of the skies. And he had a son who then dethroned and castrated him by the name of Kronos. And Kronos was the name in Greek mythology, but in Roman mythology he was named Saturn. So basically Saturn killed Uranus, so to speak. And while they died, both in Greek and Roman mythology, they now live forever in orbital harmony as planets. And we have already gathered some more science. And we are getting the ladder out and on our way, because the next stop is Polta. Yeah, and as uh, you have already seen in the previous episode, I hope you've seen the previous episode, uh, Polta is on the same orbital path as Priax, which is a very interesting, yeah, very interesting constellation. We're using, of course, Kerbal Alarm Clock to control our separate vehicles. We now have the resource probe heading for Tal. We have the Ozymandias, which also head to Tal to refuel. And we have the lander that is going to Polta. So in order for these three vehicles to stay on their respective courses, I have to make sure that they reach their respective maneuver nodes on time and I don't miss anything of that. And that is where Kerbal Alarm Clock really shines. So I've of course skipped ahead through a little bit of maneuver node drudgery and some long, long, long burn times. And we are now back with the lander and we already have a nice orbital path projected for our polta encounter so we use one more chance to gather some science uh, high above Erlum. so we keep that and we keep the other one and we gather this one and we gather that one and so on so you know the drill in basically we can gather a lot of science on this mission. If you remember correctly, if you watched my Journey to Jewel series, if you didn't, please do. I got about 20,000 something uh, science points from that mission and I expect this one to rank, well, quite above that. So let's see how we fare. Beautiful panoramic view with Erlum in the background. So we have to set our maneuver, got an encounter, yes, that's the encounter. And this is looking good, nice periaps there, already going into a near orbit. And then we're going, of course, to skip ahead to that because, yeah, we have to do some other stuff in between. We have to do some uh, sphere of influencing, so to speak, which I skip through because I really like to focus on the ships when they change the sphere of influence because sometimes Kerbal Space Program then changes their orbital path to random things. And I don't want this to happen, so every time a ship of mine changes its sphere of influence, I keep an eye on that. But now we keep an eye on Polta. And Polta is this little green rock in the background. Well, green, gray, and is that a hint of brown I sense there? Doesn't matter. We have to get down there. But of course we want to do that on the day side. So first we're lowering our apps. That's what we're doing right now. And then we're going to skip straight ahead until we burn, well, a lot of fuel to get down to the surface of Polta. So once we're down there, we of course will gather all the signs we can get. Mighty aerospike engines firing. 
One could argue that those engines are a little bit over-engineered, but if you have watched my Fatmo, no, Tecto, my Tecto uh, video, where I ascended quite a long time through that thick atmosphere, then yeah, you may have realized that that maybe was not such a bad idea to use two very powerful engines to get through there. So, but now we only have to use a fraction of their power and we're safe. Okay, so we get the ladders out, we get the science done, we get our hair did, uh, no we don't. And of course we go for a walk, a spacewalk. So I wonder if those kerbals, hmm, you know, if you look into the capsule, well in those capsules of course they have their helmets on, but in some other uh, modules, for instance in the big crew, no not in the crew capsule, in the cockpits, they don't have their helmets on. And I always wonder, where do they store their helmets? Because if you look at those cockpits, they are not really that big. So if you if you go for the internal view and you look around, then you don't see any helmets and you don't see any storage for helmets. And you also don't see any place where they can change in their space into their spacesuits because if I remember correctly, in those cockpit thingies, they sit in their flight suits, so to speak. So, where and how do Kerbals actually dress up? Think about that for a moment. And while you do that, uh, you can watch me, of course, escaping from Polta. A lot of thrust to weight uh, ratio, well, a high thrust to weight ratio, of course, always helps. That's always nice to have. And now we are on a safe orbit around Erlum. So the next plan of attack will be, you could call it almost suicidal. Because we're doing a high atmospheric entry into Erlum's upper atmosphere. Yes, I'm going to take a dive into hell. Because uh, Uranus, well, even though he was killed by his son Kronos, he banished all his other children to the Tartarus, some kind of hell. And where later on Zeus imprisoned the Titans. So yeah, Uranus is also the god who created the Tartarus, or used it basically for the first time really. And we're here with our resource scanner. And yeah, you're going to experience a nasty little bug right now. Because when I tried to scan Tal, this little rock over here, a very peculiar thing happened. First of all, you don't see any resources. But you also no longer see any spaceships, or orbital paths, or anything. I managed to salvage that save game by manually deleting the entries for the scanned celestial body. And yeah, the thing is I now really have to just guess where I could get some ore. And then I get down on the surface and drill and hope for the best. But first we have to circularize around Tal, which we are doing right now. You see while in the background. There you go. Almost done. Yep, look good. Then of course a lot of maneuvering and you yeah, have skipped ahead to the rendezvous with the resource pro because you probably don't want to see the 50th uh, rendezvous maneuver in this series. Maybe not the 50th, but there were a lot. And I think you've seen 
Enough of them, maybe. Okay, we got our resource probe back. And then we're going to lock up those tanks so they don't get drained by the Ozymandias. And now we're right back. Here we are with our lander. And this is really a high risk maneuver because I have no idea if I'm going to survive this. Whoa! This is really, really something. A pure bolt of fire across the night skies of Erlum. Okay, I'm firing my engines so I don't lose my orbital height too much. Once again... Oh, there was an aval encounter. Maybe I can get that later on. Once more, a big thrust to weight ratio comes in handy. And I got a well encounter and I got science from the upper atmosphere. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.